we have a controller here, which uh, I've called the Lewis Apps controller. And the Lewis Apps controller has a couple of um, operations. So it has a API to get apps. Um, it has an API to get intents. And it gets intents of a particular app ID. And it has an uh, API to get the schema for a particular app ID, uh, app ID and a particular intent. So this get apps um, um, API endpoints returns a list of the apps that we have configured in our uh, configuration uh, database. Uh, which is uh, in a Cosmos DB. Um, basically what we do, uh, we have used the same structure uh, that is used by these .bots files um, as they can be created using the bot emulator. Um, and we store the configuration uh, directly into the uh, Cosmos DB. So we re retrieve that configuration based on the tenant ID of the signed in user. So you need to be signed in. And we ensure that we are signed in by placing this authorize attribute on top of our controller. Um, then we um, retrieve all the Lua services that have been configured in this configuration. And for each of these services, we call the function get apps, which uh, uses the authoring API of Lewis to get the details of the apps. Um, so in the configuration, we have not necessarily the correct name uh, specified. So we retrieve the name from the, uh, uh, from the authoring API of Lewis. Um, we do this all in parallel. So we add all the async operations to a list of tasks and then wait for them all to complete and then return that, um, that list. But for, in order for this to work, we have set it up in our custom connector, pardon. So in our definition, we have created a operation, uh, Lewis apps and get apps. And this operation, this action, uh, is internal, so you are, uh, are not able to uh, select it uh, within the Logic App or Flow Designer. And it does a call to this endpoint, so to API Lewis Apps, and that route matches up with the route as configured here uh, on our controller. And it does a get. Um, it does not have any query parameters or whatever, um, because we just need some data on the signed in user. And as a response, um, what does it return? Yeah, it, it returns uh, a list of a specific entity type that is also being used by Lewis itself. Um, which is the application info response. So we have not created our own model. We can do that in the future, maybe to limit the data that goes over the wire. And in this case, we just serialize this data and return it uh, uh, in full, which means that we get more data than we actually ask for. Um, so we need to set up uh, also uh, the custom connector to tell it where to get the name for the for for uh, the list item and where to get the value for the list item. But it starts with creating an action that we can use to retrieve the values that we want populated in our dynamic list. Then in the trigger, because in this case we are using the trigger, but you can use the same uh, same thing in a action as well. So we have here the smart start dialog trigger and it has a uh, uh, request 
um, which is actually is this the requests this is the request to uh, register the webhook but we are now talking about the uh, webhook response basically the notification that the webhook will send um, once an event has happened where this webhook was registered for and you can tell that it is of type dynamic intent schema and this is a type that I created myself so you can name whatever you want it to be um, you can define it within the um, webhook response directly but in this case I'm using a reference so you can also specify references here um, as far as I can tell you can only create references by modifying the open API specification directly so that's what I did um, I'm now showing you what, how to do it within the uh, custom connector editor that you show uh, see here um, but if you do the more advanced stuff you'll end up doing it within the um, open API specification directly uh, I can click this to go to my reference or I could have clicked here um, and it does not show the definition here unfortunately so that means that we need to go to the open API specification anyway um, you can always get to the open API specification by downloading the custom connector uh, specification so you can start off with creating the uh, customer connector within the Azure portal using the designer and then download it and uh, modify it and re-import it um, you can uh, do whatever you like in this case I already downloaded it so let me pull it up so here we have my uh, my definition um, let me go to the outline so that I can get to the my defined uh, uh, schemas uh, directly so here we have this dynamic intent schema and uh, it is of a type object and here is where you can uh, only we didn't we didn't want to dive into the dynamic intent schema right away we wanted to take a look at the uh, the drop down list so we'll get to this later um, so for the drop-down list, we should be able to, to see it in the designer, which makes it a little bit easier to read. Um, so let's go to the trigger again, smart dialogue. And this has the requests, because this is part of the request. So uh, these properties are of the requests let's edit the requests and you can tell that we have this Lewis app description and intent here just as you see them here and we have one additional uh, which is the callback URL and this is where we set the internal URL that the logic app will generate for us and will send to our API and where we can uh, reach the API again um, by doing a post to this particular URL with our payload um, let's dive into this Lewis app because you can see that this Lewis app is this drop down. So on this property, we actually define that it's um, a drop down type is dynamic. So um, this way we tell it that it, uh, uh, the values within the uh, drop down need to be retrieved for from some API that we specify. Here we select the operation ID, so the action that we created to actually get to uh, the values, and here we tell it where to actually get the um, the ID from and where to get the name from. Uh, if they're both the same, you do not need to specify the display name. You can use the value for both the value as well as the name um, that's the default so this way by setting it up like this when we 
away again. Let's open it up again. So right now it's not getting the schema or, or the drop down values yet. Um, but as you can tell, it will eventually uh, retrieve them in the background. So you can now see that it's actually just trying to get to our uh, apps. You can see that we have configured uh, correctly one Lewis service. It will actually get those apps. So here we now have these apps, as you can tell. Um, and it will return this these details to the API. And it will now show us the ID, probably because there's a timeout happening now. Um, because we were setting breakpoints and stuff. Um, if we were to do it again, there's some uh, stuff that you need to be aware of. You can tell now it's uh, showing the name uh, of the app instead of the ID of the app. For the intent, it's similar, but w the intent requires that we have selected the app prior. And you can configure that also on this value. So we, we still tell it that it's uh, dynamic. We tell that it's from the get intents and the get intents um, action that we have set up. We have told it that it requires a parameter in this particular case, app ID. And we can select one of the parameters that are available to us uh, in the um, in this trigger. So we can also access the callback URL. We can also access the description, but in our case, we are interested in the app ID. Um, and in this case, we use the name for the value as well as the display name. So we can uh, leave it at the display name for the values uh, selection. So let's take a look at that get intents action. So the get intents action does a get to this particular endpoint. And as you can tell here, we have uh, told it that we expect a path arrival. Um, and as you can tell, this matches up with the routes that we have set up here, also with the app ID in the uh, URL. And by setting it up like this, um, the custom connector understands that it needs to supply this API, uh, this app ID, uh, before it can actually execute this um, uh, this action. And that way, we can have dynamic values. Uh, we can also have static values, which is just a static list of uh, options that are available. For example, if you want to uh, have the user pick between. Uh, male, female, or you know, all those types of uh, selections that you want to enable. So those are the uh, dynamic lists. 